Everything God has made shows the wisdom and the power of God. But some things that he's made also teach spiritual lessons. For example, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, let me give you another example. A caterpillar, it doesn't get born again, but it's sort of like being born again. There's a big change when it's transformed into a butterfly. And Jesus said, you must be born again. We were all born with bodies, sort of like our parents. They were like their, sort of like their parents. And one of the things is they were born and we were born with sinful hearts. That's why it's so easy to do bad, even when we made up our minds to be good and do right. Jesus said, you must be born again. That little butterfly is transformed into something that shows God's glory even more than it did as a caterpillar. Now the butterfly can do things that the caterpillar could not do. It's more beautiful than the caterpillar. And so, we, we must be born again. Now, the caterpillar is not born again, but it would be fair to say the caterpillar is transformed into a new creature. And the Bible says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things will become new. And so, when the little caterpillar comes out of the cocoon, everything becomes new. It, it looks different. It can do things. It, it, the world is, is going to be a lot different for a beautiful butterfly that can fly around than it was for a little caterpillar that crawls slowly along. Now, the caterpillar couldn't fly at all. It's not just that a butterfly can fly better. The caterpillar couldn't fly at all. It couldn't even get a good running start. Even if it climbed up into a tree and climbed out onto a, a branch and jumped off, it's just going to fall with a little thud down below. But after it's transformed into a butterfly, flying comes naturally. It's kind of easy. And it was impossible to please God for us. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, the Word of God says. But now, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Not just the select few Christians who are more mature. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. We can do it. It's normal for us to do it now. Oh, we still have temptations, to be sure. We still have inside us the flesh and the spirit continually warring against ourselves. But now we can do it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I remember talking to a, a lady some time back. She was a pastor's daughter, and she worked in the church, and she would do special music and so forth. But she said, after a while, she realized, because she was stubborn and selfish, she realized she'd never really been born again. Oh, she knew a lot of the stuff in her head. She could give you a lot of the Bible answers, I'm sure. But there's a lot of difference between knowing stuff in your head and really being born of God. And this lady, her name is Nell, she Ask God to do for her what she could not do for herself. She turned to Jesus for mercy. There's a big change. She was a nurse. 
now, besides her nursing, and she, she was a pretty good nurse, I think, before, but now she would take extra time and minister to the patients and see their families and try to find out what they needed. Now she loves them. And that's the test if we're really saved. The Bible says we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life. So I've got a question for you. Are you here? I'm not asking you if you're a caterpillar, but I am asking you, have you been born again? Has there been that change? We used to be selfish, sometimes hurt others, and it didn't really bother us much. Are you loving others now? Even if they're not your color, even if they're not in your particular class in society, even if they've been bad to you, even if they don't like your family and your family doesn't like them, do you love them? That's a test if you've really been born again. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another, Jesus said, John 13, 35. Have you been born again? Have you, have you become a new creature? If you have, there's been a change. Now we obey, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar. Now, as Nell was telling her story, she mentioned how in some areas of her life, she still had some problems, which we all do really. She said her problems was, her problem, she was, her eating was out of control. She was undisciplined, wouldn't exercise, didn't take care of herself or things kind of sloppy, but then she realized she needed to make a change. And the Bible says, oh, she'd already made a change. She'd made a big change. But as we live after a while, we see there's other changes we need to make too. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. And even though we've we've repented and we made some changes this command is for Christians Romans chapter 12 be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed in her case she said she was her eating was out of control she didn't exercise her things were sloppy and she began to make some changes she exercised she began to uh, practice some self-discipline in her eating and, and other things. And if you'd have seen her a little later, you'd have seen a big change in the way she looked and the way she kept her things. And now, my question for you is, what changes do you still need to make? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. The Word of God says. I remember many years ago, I, I knew I should win people to the Lord. I knew I should be a soul winner. And I wanted to be one too. But over and over again, at the last minute, I got scared. I chickened out. And I asked God to give me boldness. And he's helped me in that area. I must admit this, he's been pretty patient and long-suffering with me. But whereas I was a coward, a chicken, now I wasn't a chicken about everything. I, I, I would debate, argue with people about certain things. I, I was a president of the debating club in high school many years ago. But when it came to talking about Jesus, Man, I was just a first-class chicken. Too afraid to talk, tell them what Jesus has done for me and for them. I asked God to give me boldness, and He's helped me. There has been a change. Or maybe the change needs to be, you've been rebellious. 
disobedient to those God has placed over you. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in all things. Kids, how you been doing on that? The Bible also says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Be subject to them in everything. Ephesians 5, 22 and 24. Ladies, how you doing on that one? The rest of you, men, others. The Bible says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. We're supposed to obey the laws. Which ones? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Not just the ones that we like. Not just the ones when the cops are watching. No. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Or maybe you've been kind of uh, angry and irritable. You remember seeing one of these uh, little caterpillars that's really prickly all over? Sometimes you see them as they're crossing the pavement on the road. Uh, let me ask this question. Have you ever seen a Christian? You're pretty sure they're saved, but they're so irritable and prickly and kind of hard to get along with. I remember a guy telling me, he, he, he's, he said his mom's just an old grump. Now, it's wrong for him to have that, to say that. It's even wrong for him to have that attitude. But it's also kind of sad when somebody has a reputation for being an old grump. And you don't have to stay that way. We don't have to stay here. We've already turned to the Lord for mercy. We've made some changes. We've repented. But after a while, we see other things that need to be changed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Or maybe the thing that needs to be changed is a discouraged, bad attitude, ungrateful, discontented. Let me use the caterpillar as an example. It can crawl around on stems or around on the dirt or the muck. It may even climb up into a tree. But hey, after it's transformed into a butterfly, it's not crawling around in the muck. It can fly up among the branches in the trees and sometimes even up among the clouds. And those of us who were so discouraged and in a bad mood and dragging other people down by our complaining sinful complaining, we can learn to be thankful and we can ask God to satisfy us early with his mercy. Psalm 90 verse 14, satisfy us early with his mercy so we can rejoice and be glad all our days. And when we do, it'll cause others to see it and notice it and fear God. This Psalm 40 verse two or three along in there, it says, he's put a new song in my mouth even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. We go through the, all the ups and downs in life, but if we're cheerful and happy through all those ups and downs, people will notice. And they'll start taking God seriously. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. We don't need to go around with a bad attitude, griping and complaining. Some people are just no matter what's, what's going on, they're going to find something to complain about. And pretty soon, everybody around them is in a bad mood. On the other hand, some people, they see the funny side of life. They're grateful for whatever they do have. They're cheerful. They're happy. Singing, humming through, through life. And pretty soon, everybody around them is in a good mood. Hey, I want to be that kind of person. And I can be, and you can too. We don't need to stay here be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Renewing of your minds? Yeah. We need to get into God's Word, meditate on it, saturate in it. Be sure we're obeying it. Now, that reminds me, the little caterpillar will always be a caterpillar unless it does this. It crawls out on a stem and spins a cocoon or it forms into a chrysalis. It's in there for a number of days. It's not really doing much of anything. But finally, when it comes out, 
It's a complete change. They call it complete metamorphosis, complete change. Now, it wasn't really doing much of anything in the caterpillar. Yeah, but the Lord, the Creator, was making a great big change. It goes in a clumsy, little, slow caterpillar. A number of days later, after the Lord has transformed it, comes out a beautiful, graceful butterfly. It can crawl slowly along before. Now it can fly up through the tree branches and up among the clouds. Yeah, there's a big lesson here. There's a transformation there in secret in that cocoon. Yeah, and some of the most important things we do are the things we do in secret. Some of the most harmful things we've done have been secret thoughts. The Bible says from within, out of the heart, proceed evil thoughts of adulteries and fornications and murders and foolishness and covetousness and other evil things. The, at the same time, some of the most important things we do that help us are the things we do in secret. Jesus said, when you give, don't make it public and show everybody. Give your gifts that are helping people. Do it in secret, Jesus said in Matthew 6. He said, when you pray, Go in your room, close the door, pray to the Father in secret. And God will, re will reward you openly. If you fast, God said, Jesus said, don't make a show of it, don't tell everybody you're doing it. Fast in secret, and God, who sees in secret, will reward you. You see, the caterpillar inside there, nobody sees what's happening. It's all in secret. Let's walk before the Lord in secret, uh, in the secrecy of our mind, loving Him, turning from temptations and sin that would be in our mind, spending a time alone with Him. Many times early in the morning is the best time to do it. If I tried to have my quiet time at night, I'd <laughs> get sleepy and go to sleep. But we need to have a time alone with the Lord each day. And as we get to know Him better, as we read His Word and we see how He has helped us and we're thanking Him and praising Him, after a while there'll be a change in us. Here's how it says it. 2 Corinthians 3.18 As we behold His glory, we're transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. How does it happen? as we get to know Him, as we see His glory. Have a time alone with God where you read His Word. Think it over. Don't be in too big of a rush. Meditate on it. Thank God for what He's already done and you'll get to know God better. And as you get to know Him, then you'll get to be more and more like Him. Remember Moses? He went up on the mountain, Mount Sinai. He was up there 40 days with God. He came back down. The people are afraid of him. He doesn't know why. Well, you see, his face was glowing. It was shining. He was not aware of it. The people saw it and they were scared. Well, you see, he was up on the mountain with God, seeing some of God's glory. He goes down among the people and they can see some of the glory of God on Moses. Yeah, as we behold his glory, will be transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. You remember the disciples there with Jesus for a few years? And even then, when Jesus was arrested, Peter denied the Lord. All of the disciples forsook him and let, fled. They were scared. But then, they're praying, I'm pretty sure they must have confessed their sin. And suddenly God's Spirit came down on them on the day of Pentecost. There was a big transformation. Before they were cowards. Peter, the others, all of them. Now, those enemies of the Lord saw the boldness of Peter and John 
and they noticed, they took note that they'd been with Jesus. You see, even the enemies of the Lord, they not only saw the boldness, they not only saw the change, but they recognized, they could figure out what caused the change. They'd been with Jesus. That's what made the change. Now, many years ago, I went to a good Bible college and it's really helped me. But I haven't gone around the world, around the country and around the world bragging about the Bible college. But I sure would li like it if people could tell I've been with Jesus. Actually, the Bible college did help me to come closer to the Lord. And he's the one who made the change and, made, and helped me in so many ways. Can people tell that you've been with Jesus? Or are you too busy? You know, there's a lot, lots of things to do and there's lots of kinds of entertainment, especially on your smartphone. Lots of things. But don't be too busy. My dad used to say, don't cheat on the Lord in the time you spend with him in his word. They're transformed in secret by the Lord Jesus. If a caterpillar was, is, and that's the same thing, we, same way we're transformed. Let me mention one other transformation. And hey, this is a complete transformation. When we got saved, we we're transformed, but it wasn't complete. And then even after we got saved, there are further transformations. But still, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But I want to tell you about a complete transformation. And better still, it, it also, well, it's better still, but also good. It is a sudden tr transformation. How does that happen? When does that happen? That happens when Jesus comes back. The Bible says we will be like him for we shall see him as he is. I'm drawing a little butterfly right now that used to live in the UK, but in 1978, I think it was, the last ones, they say, the last ones died out. So now it's extinct. You know what that reminds me of? Our troubles, our sinful uh, nature, our temptations, our pains, all the unpleasant things of life will one day be extinct when Jesus comes back and we're changed suddenly in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Boy, that'll be wonderful. I've got a younger sister who said that the thing she looks forward to most about heaven is that we'll be perfect, no more sinful temptations to drag us down. There will come a time when we'll make a complete change. Suddenly, permanently, that's gonna be when the Lord comes back. Listen to 1 John, 1 John 3, verse two. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. We've been born again. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Did you notice? It has all three transformations. Beloved, now we're the sons of God. We've been transformed into God's children. When Jesus comes back, we will, it'll be better than we have ever had it. It does not yet appear what we shall be. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. Right now, in this life, we're, our, we're praying and working on improving, loving others better, winning others more, praising God more obeying God's commands more. We'll be, what kind of change? We'll be perfectly happy 
and loving and holy, fullness of joy, pleasure forever. Not some good days and some bad days. Good days every day. Also, our bodies will be made perfect. We had a friend we used to visit every Sunday in the old age home, the nursing home. And ever since she was a little girl, she had a terrible case of uh, arthritis and she would just stoop together. She couldn't stretch out her little fingers. She could not stretch out her legs. You had to pick her up and carry her. When, when Jesus comes back, suddenly that little body that was so stiff and deformed will suddenly be a beautiful, graceful, healthy body. She'll be able to run like a deer. Our bodies will be made perfect. Our spirits will be made perfect. The Bible talks about the spirit of just men made perfect. Where are you? Are you here? Have you been born again? What areas in your life still need to be transformed? Jesus said you must be born again. When you're born again, there's a change. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. There's been a big change. But then you'll find we still need to make further changes. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Let's don't be too lazy, too busy to spend time in secret with God and be prepared for the Lord's return because when he comes, we'll be transformed suddenly in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I'm looking forward to that. And if you're looking forward to that, you'll be purifying yourself each day. Let's spend some time in God's word. Confessing our sins, asking God to help us obey and live for him better. And bring more people, rescue more people who are going on their way to the lake of fire. Let's don't stay in a spirit of fear and timidity. We can share the good news with others so they'll be born again, so they can grow more, so they'll be ready when the Lord Jesus comes back again. It's God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You do what you can do, and you'll find you'll need God's help as well. Why don't you pray this prayer? Lord Jesus, please transform my disobedient, sinful heart. Show what you can do in this poor sinner. Now that prayer will work whether you're saved or whether you're not saved. If you're not saved, you need to be saved and transformed. If you are saved, we still need further transformation. Let's continue to follow Jesus, love him better, and get his help day by day to be further transformed.